Welcome back to the show. Happy New Year, everybody. It's actually New Year's Eve here. You're probably not going to see this video until 2023. Because I'm busy today and uh, just trying to wrap up a couple of things before the end of the year, so to speak. I know that may sound cliche, but that is the case. I did come up with a new idea. I've had this idea for a while. I just wanted to share with you all and do another intro uh, to this other project. I know lately I've been putting up a lot of intros on projects and you guys aren't seeing the projects getting done as of yet. But trust me, they're going to get done, and I will definitely keep you guys uh, posted to the current activity on the projects. Due to the fact that we got into the holidays, uh, things get a little busy. I have a business to run, and it's the end of the year. Uh, I also have a wife and kids, and uh, we do uh, celebrate the holidays passionately, we'll say. So uh, that's what we did, and uh, thank God it was a terrific holiday. And I hope your holiday was also terrific along with your new year. I do hope your new year is fantastic and I have nothing but goodwill and hopes that we go into this year and it's a terrific year for everybody regardless of circumstances, regardless of situations, regardless of conditions. It's about good vibes. It's about going into the new year with the right mindset and holding to it as you're going with it. You got to start it right. You got to start it from the beginning just right. And it's actually one of my favorite times of the years because I actually have to sit down towards the end of the year and reflect on all the things that I didn't get done that I wanted to get done and all the things that I could have, should have, would have that didn't happen just like everybody else. And now it's almost like a pseudo reset. I don't say it's an authentic reset because it really isn't, as you know. But a pseudo reset, I'll take that. And tomorrow on New Year's Day, I'll be sitting around putting together a list of all the crap that I didn't do this past year and all the crap that I want to try to do this coming year. That's a good thing. I've decided to build a barn. We got a farm. Kind of. We will have a farm this coming year. Kind of. Uh, we, we, we have a palm tree farm. It's a very small palm tree farm, and it's been a palm tree farm for years and years and years. And right now it's dormant, and we are planning on uh, resurrecting that, getting it back up in order, and getting it going full throttle. My wife and my daughter are going to take that on, and you'll see that in another episode. But today I wanted to talk to you about the barn. They're the ones that do the planting. They're the ones that do the marketing. They're the ones that uh, do the selling and all that other good stuff when it comes to a farm i'm the one that has to pay for everything and i'm the one that has to build everything so of course with a farm one would need a barn at least in our case we would we need a place to put our supplies we need a place to put our equipment we need a place that uh, is going to provide some security uh, against the creatures against the elements and against crime down here in south florida obviously there is a good amount of crime And the second half of that is hurricane season, making sure that everything's protected between heat and between some minor flooding. And of course, between those nasty little hurricanes that come through and destroy everything. And uh, through the years, I have lost, uh, I've lost some personal items and equipment and things of that matter due to the weather, due to flooding, due to storms. And I I just want to make sure that whatever we put together as far as the barn is concerned, uh, that it's good, that it's decent. Now, I'm sure you've seen some of my previous videos, and if you haven't, I'm not a big fan of wood. I like wood. I think it's beautiful. I like everything about wood. But what I don't like is how vulnerable wood seems to be to the elements. Now, I understand one can say, well, if you treat it properly and you put certain chemicals on it and you do all this other fancy stuff to wood, uh, it should be durable and it should do X, Y, Z. I get that. I get that. I, I, I completely get that. But once you get to that point, it's really not cost effective unless you're building something fabulous. Now, of course, the gadget way, we like to build things fabulous, so to speak, but they got to be cost effective. Um, I don't have $100,000 to build a small barn with, uh, nor do I venture or dream about building or wishing it. I, I, I like to be able to build things cost effectively, and I like to beat the odds. You know, I like to right the wrong on a lot of different levels. So, 
my barn idea starts with boxes. Now, everybody's big into the tiny homes. Everybody's big into the containers at this point, container housing. What I can tell you is you have a decent amount of rain. You have a decent amount of heat down here in, in South Florida and, and the elements and the humidity. And I see a lot of rusted out container boxes. The first, the first thing I put on my property was actually a 20 foot container box with steel. And it did okay, but it also rusted fast. And there were a lot of holes in it, and a lot of creatures, and nastiness, and a lot of mustiness, and a lot of mold and mildew, and just, ah. I didn't like it. I didn't want it. And I saw how it was built with the flat roofs, and I saw how the metal was corrugated, where, you know, it had those ridges that go up and down. And as a result of that, it created pockets, and it created trays almost, where it would just contain water and then when the water sat there well you know the rest not only would you have seepage coming into the box uh, but it would also rust out holes and get underneath everything and it was just terrible it's a bad design well <sighs> that would be subject to interpretation because a bad design would mean that it would be a bad design for its intended purpose Building houses and structures out of container boxes was never their intended purpose. I'm sure they do fabulous when they're on a big barge or freighter ship and they're coming over here from one end to the other. I'm sure of that. But to sit them stationary in one place where they're not moving, where the water does not have a chance to run off, and there's no movement on these boxes, nah, not too good, not too good. So what I started to look into was possibly um, some other type of boxes. I like the idea of the box. You know, structural rigidity, something that was commercial grade uh, that would be sturdy. I see a lot of these tin buildings. I see a lot of these pole barns. I see a lot of these steel small sheds and all sorts of different things that are being sold all over the place. And I'll be totally honest with you, I'm not a fan of them. I don't want to say that they're all garbage, but for my intended purpose, I was not satisfied with um, the quality of the builds, so to speak. And what I did not want to do is purchase this large kit and have to re-engineer something that I paid a premium for that has already been engineered. Just didn't like that idea. So I started looking at other boxes and I started looking at um, trailers, enclosed trailers. I started looking at truck bodies. And I even started looking at travel trailers and campers. And it's funny because I had a neighbor that I was having a discussion with when it came to building out one of my trailers. And he was basically reminding me that campers are kind of crappy uh, because of their build, but reminded me that they go through a hurricane on a weekly basis, almost depending on how much traveling you're doing. Dragging that thing down the highway would mean you're exposing it most likely to winds of 50 to 70 miles an hour consistently. And the poor thing has to stay together. And at that point, well, we all know what goes on with those travel trailers and campers and this this video is not about that, but it wasn't good. So I started looking at other things. Okay, well, how about trailers that are on the back of 18 wheelers? How about box trucks and things of that matter? You see those all over the place. And what's interesting is you don't see too many of them destroyed after a heavy storm. You don't really see them destroyed after a hurricane unless it flipped a damn truck. And at that point you have bigger problems. You really do. Then I found reefer boxes and I thought wow well that, that's pretty interesting a reefer box is a refrigerated box now it can be a trailer it can be a truck body or a box that's on the back of a truck it's the type of box that brings ice cream and perishable food and produce to the supermarkets and anything basically that needs to stay cold well in order for it to stay cold efficiently one would have to insulate that box 
So a lot of those boxes actually, well, all of them have to be insulated. It's very difficult, I would imagine, for a refrigerator unit to keep up with a box. It's an oven. You know, can you imagine trying to refrigerate an oven? How difficult that would be? Yeah, well, that's what would happen in a closed trailer without insulation, without it being set up properly. And they typically had a, uh, spray foam and some plywood and different things, and they were built out, and they were actually more insulated than even a travel trailer, which is great news in my opinion. Not only does it keep the temperature down, minimizes the humidity, but it also adds to the structural rigidity. It also adds to the weight, where in my particular case, I like the weight because heavier is better in my case. Because if a storm comes, you don't want the damn thing blowing away either, right? So I went down to Miami, and I went and I looked at a couple of boxes that were for sale. Now, these boxes, they were called truck bodies. And a lady owned a dealership selling these box trucks, and I went and saw her. And she basically told me that she doesn't sell too many of them because she doesn't want to deal with the hassles and the nuisances of customers buying them. Because, you know, you have that over-the-top retail expectation on a lot of different levels. And typically, the people that are in the market that be willing to buy things like that, they're usually not truck drivers. <laughs> so, project people such as myself, but I guess they were more of a nuisance to her than anything being down in Miami. Not sure. But she showed me my first box. The box she showed me was a refrigerated box that she was offering me a terrific deal on, under $1,000 for this box. It was 24 feet long, and it was fiberglass. And basically what she said to me was that most of these people that are in the business, the truck drivers, they don't like the fiberglass boxes because if they get hit, it's harder for them to find somebody to repair them because a lot of body shops don't mess with fiberglass. And the other thing is they were substantially heavier. Now, what I did notice is they were very high quality. So, not to let the cat out of the bag completely on what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it, but I bought one of those boxes and I used it for storage on my property. And the next thing you know, one box turned into two boxes to five boxes. I got a lot of those boxes. I swear by those boxes. People don't really want them and I still think that they're one of the best kept secrets. Those boxes new are approximately 30 to $50,000. So you can imagine the build quality that goes into them. But let me go ahead and give you a quick look so you can see what we're talking about. There's a couple right there. There's a couple right there. Now, I'm going to show you the inside. You may or may not have seen it on one of my other videos. But I'm going to show you the inside of one of these boxes. This particular box, I was working on a previous project that I never finished. But look at the inside of this box. Look at the floor. That's an aluminum diamond plate floor. You know how expensive that floor is? Ah, don't even want to tell you how expensive it is. Kick panels going all the way up. Yeah, and here I did some cutting, previous project, like I stated, but look at the foam. Look at the thickness of the wall. See, I cut this piece out, but the wall actually starts here. Look at that. What was that, five, six inches? Look how high the ceilings are. These lights... Those lights are $300 each. They're 12 volt LED lights. They're fantastic. What I did was, well, I don't, yeah, I do. I went ahead and I'll show you. I bought these step down transformers. Let's see. Light them right up. Transformers I bought off of eBay, they were like 30 bucks. Not bad at all. But this is what we're going to build the barn out of. I'm gonna use several of these boxes and I'm gonna cut them to spec and I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna reinforce them and I'm gonna support them and I think it's gonna be an awesome idea. 
and again as usual i will be jumping around on my projects like i always do but i just wanted to keep you posted this is definitely an intro on a 2023 project and we are going to be tackling this one relatively soon because i need a barn <laughs> we're accelerating plans on a farm and i need a place to put the equipment that i need to purchase to get all of this going we've been kind of quiet with the farm right now and she's got her nurseries and she's doing her germinating and all that other crazy stuff but we definitely need to get that barn up and running so that's where we're at let me just go ahead and let you see what's uh what's going on here i think they're great boxes even the roof is fiberglass on them so terrific you don't really see water leaks you don't really see rot because they don't have the option how they're built they're really what's going to go wrong in a fiberglass box with foam insulation with aluminum flooring with some plastic paneling on the ceiling what's going to go wrong with one of those boxes nothing and you got box steel in between those windows there's about a one by one one and a quarter by one and a quarter type box steel uh, reinforcement that goes up in between every one of those windows top to bottom and that's where it's getting its integrity from and then of course it runs through the roof and runs underneath it and underneath it it has five inch c channel beams going parallel uh, with about a 32 inch gap front to back and i guess that's where it laid up on top of the chassis of the truck and it got bolted down with u-bolts so uh, that's where we're at just wanted to introduce you to this new project yeah. And again, wish you guys all a happy new year, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, this will probably be the last video of the year for me. Shout out to my friend Steve lives down the street. Just wanted to wish him a happy new year and say hello. But yeah, this, this is definitely going to be the last video of the year. Just wanted to get this one out and definitely wish you guys all a happy new year. I didn't want to wait to put it out for 23. Happy new year. Thanks for watching.